open up and see What kind of lifeline will be waiting there for me Need to bury all these things And let them fade away I'm not scared, I'm prepared To find myself again I wanna fly over mountains I wanna... Hey everybody, so today I wanted to talk about a young man and I will be having a few featured missing cases for today. There is quite a bit of people that went missing on this day quite a few years ago but this case stands out to me and first I'm going to be reading from the Charlie Project and then I am going to go into some news articles. So this young man's name is James Dupree Lewis Jr. He went missing 7-28-1991 from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. He was considered endangered missing male, black, four years old at the time. He was three feet tall and three feet tall with three inches, 60 pounds, a white muscle shirt with black trim on the arms and neck, blue and yellow shorts, white tube socks and no shoes is what he was wearing when he vanished. He's African-American male, brown hair, brown eyes. James' nickname is Squirt. James's mother, Deborah A. Johnson, and her live-in boyfriend of one year, Maurice Marcel Martin, reported him missing at 8.30 a.m. on July 28, 1991. Martin stated he left the child in the car while he went into the giant food, mark, food supermarket in the 300 block of North Reservoir Street in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. For those, I have pulled up a map so you can kind of see the area. Of what they're talking about. So that's the 300 block of North Reservoir Street in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. When he came out a few minutes later, James was gone. He has never been heard from again. And an extensive search turned up no sign of James. Authorities eventually determined Martin's story about James' disappearance was untrue, and he was charged with criminal homicide in October of 1991. Johnson testified against Martin at his trial, stating he severely abused James on a regular basis, forcing him to stand in a corner for hours at a time and whipping him with various items, and that he abused her as well. At one point, as a joke, he allegedly gave James a soda spiked with hot sauce. Neighbors had also saw Martin harshly disciplining the, the boy, kicking him and striking him with a tree branch. Numerous witnesses testified that James appeared terrified of Martin. Martin also contacted James's preschool teacher and told her she should hit him if he misbehaved. Martin had been investigated for possible child abuse earlier in 1991, and social workers made multiple unannounced visits to the household. But Johnson and Martin strenuously denied that there was any violence in the home, and both James and his baby sister appeared to be healthy. I wanna bring up a picture of James. I can. Yep. All right. So there's James. Let's bring up his picture. Paired healthy, properly dressed, and well-fed with no visible injuries. 
Child welfare authorities closed their file on the family two months before James disappeared. Martin's attorney admitted his client had abused James, but said that didn't mean he was responsible for the child's disappearance. Two witnesses who testified for the defense said they saw James alive after he was reported missing. Martin was convicted of third degree murder in May of 1992. The jury decided he unintentionally killed James while abusing him and invented the abduction story to cover up his crime. He served 20 years in prison and was released in 2012. Most of James's family, including his mother, have moved away from the area. His body has never been found. If you have any information on this case, the investigating agency is Lancaster Police Department, 717-735-3300. I want to bring up a news article. So this article has been archived, but it's still here. So 29 years ago, which this was written uh, August 23rd, 2020. So 29, 33. So 33 years ago now, a man reported his girlfriend's four-year-old son when missing from the parking lot of the former giant grocery on Reservoir Street in Lancaster City. City. The boy James D. Lewis Jr., known as Squirt, was never found despite massive searches. Even with no body, a Lancaster County prosecutor persuaded a jury that Squirt was dead and that Maurice M. Martin, who is known to beat the boy, was responsible. It is the only nobody homicide ever prosecuted in Lancaster County. Based on circumstantial evidence, including Martin's behavior, actions, and inaction, a jury convicted him of third-degree murder in May of 1992. After nearly 11 hours of deliberation, the other options were involuntary manslaughter or acquittal. Martin, now 55, who was from Coatesville, was released October 7, 2011, after serving the maximum of 10 to 20 year sentence. The penalty for third degree is now 20 to 40 years. Martin, is, Martin in a brief phone call Tuesday, maintained his innocence. How does somebody commit a homicide in less than 10 minutes and get rid of the body? He said, adding that he passed two lie detector tests. Beyond that, he had no comment. Almost immediately after Squirt's disappearance, police began to suspect Martin. Police charged him in October of 1991. Martin had spotted Squirt missing July 28, 1991, telling police he had left him in his car while he ran into Giant early that morning. Squirt must have been abducted, but Martin didn't appear distraught when he talked to the police and he was evasive, an officer testified. The prosecution theorized the abduction story was a cover-up and said they contended Martin had beat Squirt unconscious July 26th or 27th, likely at his girlfriend's South Lime Street apartment and got rid of his body July 28th, 1991. <clears throat> to this day, I don't believe it was intentional, Bill Chalfin who was the lead investigator in the case, told LNP for a July 2011 article, Martin lost control, then tried to cover it up. The defense tried to show that Squirt could still have been alive, and it put on two witnesses who claimed to have seen the boy. Prosecutors said the witnesses were mistaken. In addition, being abusive, Martin didn't behave like a caregiver of a missing child, the prosecution said. Martin asked a giant employee if she saw a boy, 
But then Martin drove off. He didn't talk to a manager and he didn't ask a firefighter who was in the parking lot for help look for him. And a cellmate of Martin's testified that he heard Martin say on the phone, they'll never find the body. They haven't looked in the right place. Martin's appeals were denied. And we see that in many cases that the cellmate, you know, usually has somewhat of a, a story. And now we have this article, Squirt Vanish, Vanished Memories Did Not. All right, so it was 20 years ago when Lancaster Police first heard about the missing boy. The call came on July 28, 1991 from Deborah Johnson, a young mother who said she couldn't find four-year-old James to Dupree Lewis. Johnson's boyfriend, Maurice Barton, said he ran into a local supermarket and left the child behind in the car. When Martin came out, he said there was no sign of the 60-pound boy, fondly known as Squirt, gone without a trace, or so Martin said. For 71 days, investigators scoured over evidence and performed interviews for leads. Residents organized massive search for the brown-eyed boy, last seen shoeless. He didn't walk in onto a new life at four, said County President Judge Joseph Madden Basher, a prosecutor back then. Something happened to him. What happened? Police eventually learned was that Martin had come into the boy's life about a year earlier. From that point, the child sustained beating after beating from the athletic 26-year-old Coatesville neighbor native. On July 27, 1991, the child abuse turned into murder, police said. To this day, I don't believe it was intentional, said County Detective Bill, lead investigator in the case. Martin was doing what he thought was proper discipline. It was a parent who lost control, then tried to cover it up. In May 1992, a jury convicted Martin of third-degree murder. It was, and still is, an unprecedented verdict here. The only murder conviction with a body local experts say Martin is paying for the crime with 20 years in state prison. He'll be released sometime in the next two months, prison officials said. But the boy he killed, police said, was never found. Johnson moved out of state. Soon after her son's death, efforts to reach her for this report were unsuccessful. Squirt's story is still vivid in the memories of local residents, including Shelvin, who had a four-year-old son of his own when assigned to Squirt's case. For those 71 days, Shelvin constantly thought about Squirt, pondering who had killed the child and where his tiny body had been stashed. But the detective's gut feeling that he had his that he had his man from day one after the first interview, Shelfin said this week. Early suspicions, things just didn't fit. Shelfin said of his first meeting with Martin and the boy's mother. The couple walked into the city police station on July 28, 1991, Shelvin recalled. There, Martin shared his story. He was with the boy at the giant supermarket on North Reservoir Street, but left the youngster in a car during a quick dash for groceries. When he returned to the parking lot, Squirt was gone. One thing, however, was missing from Martin's recollection, failing. There was no real emotion, Shelvin said. There was casualness to the reporting. Shalfant said he also noticed that the boy's mother had little to say. Police later learned that she held the key to the case, but Martin was keeping close guard. It was learned that Johnson also had been on the receiving end of Martin's abuse. There's no doubt she felt threatened by Maurice, Shalfant said. The detective knew 
he needed Martin out of the picture to get the real story on Squirt. So he paused on a day when Martin was away from home. He convinced the Martin, the mother to move with her infant daughter into protective custody. I told her, you don't want this happen to your daughter too, Shelvin said. Once she got away from his leverage and grasp, she opened up to us. Horrible punishment. It was then the police started to learn that Martin had ruled the roost with an iron fist, and Squirt got the worst of it. Martin was bas basically pummeling the kid. Madden Spasher said there were these horrendous beatings that Squirt suffered, and it was just constant. The nightmarish tales of abuse came out at trial. Squirt was forced to stand on a crate for hours. The mother would testify. In another instance, a kick from Martin sent the boy airborne. And there was the soda can punishment, angered that the boy was always thirsty. Martin spiked a can of soda with hot sauce. It was said in court. Squirt reached for it and took a swig. Martin was chuckling when he heard the boy choking. Shelvin said it was just a warped sense of discipline. Defense attorney Alan Goldberg argued at trial that a missing boy and an abusive adult don't necessarily add up to murder. The Commonwealth went out of its way to show you it's not a nice man. Goldberg said at the trial, but did the Commonwealth show you he committed homicide? Goldberg wasn't available for this story. It was prosecutor Jack Kenneth who the jury ultimately believed. Kenneth now deceased, seamlessly laid out the case, Sheldon said. He was probably one of the few people in the country that could pull this off. Madden Spasher recalled of his former colleague, Kenneth leaned on witnesses who saw Squirt the night he was believed to have died. The boy was subdued on the evening of July 27, 1991, those witnesses said in court his eyes were heavy and he didn't say a word. And at some point he disappeared. You don't need a body to convict somebody. Madden Spasher said that's not the law. After 10 hours of deliberation, the jury decided they would convict without one. A couple of jurors, as they walked into the courtroom to announce the verdict, whether it was because Martin was guilty or because the abuse court endured, I don't know. At 2 p.m. May 14, 1992, the jury foreman spoke guilty. Closure of sorts. Maurice Marcel Martin, now 46, will be a free man by the fall. Sometime between now and October, a spokesman at the prison said this week. After this trial, many also blamed the mother. After all, she knew of the extreme abuse and stood pat, they said. Charging her criminally, however, was an option for the police. Unfortunately, we needed her cooperation to put the evidence against Maurice, Shelvin said. The probe into Squirt's whereabouts has all but ended. Though there is still a case file at the city police station, and officers will fail any calls on the matter. But they haven't heard a word in years. Squirt's survivors are believed to have moved from the area Johnson already was living out of state during the Martins' trial. The family hasn't asked about leads, Shelvin said. I think they have come to resolve with the conviction. The saddest part for the family was there was never an admission, he said, and no chance for proper physical burial. Shelvin said he still thinks about the child all the time. Whenever I see a missing person report, the detective said, Police will take calls at 735-3300 from people who have information about Squirt Lewis case. So sad. And it's still happening today. Um, these parents are still killing babies, step-parents, foster parents, adoptive parents, and it just needs to end. So if you could please hit that like button, comment below, and let's get... Squirt's name back out there in the algorithm. I do thank each and every one of you for always coming in and hitting the like button and commenting below and sharing and helping me lighting the missing's way home. You guys have a great day 
and look for another video because I will be uploading um, throughout the day. Love you all.